Hello and welcome to RC Shim. Thanks for joining me in my hangar. Today we can take a look at the Quantum Ground Station Hobby King was nice enough to send me. And we'll find out if it's a nice device for you. It's a plastic box which can hold a battery and it has some voltage regulators. I can show you the, the insides, the, the electronics of this thing. It gives you 4 12 volt outputs and one 5 volt USB output. And also a plug 5 volt output. Of course an on off switch. It will show you the single cells of your light pole and the combined voltage and you can have a preset lipo alarm which goes to the single cell so you can for example set it to 3.4 volts as soon as one of the cells drops down to 3.4 volts it will sound a very loud alarm of course for this you have to use a four cell XT style balance plug and it has an XT60 plug which is convenient. I can use the Multistar 5200 mAh 4-cell batteries. They fit in nice. The LiPo checker drains 8 mA. So in case you really forget to disconnect it, get around 500 hours until the battery is sucked dry. It's up two weeks. Now it shows me 3.8 volts are my cells. Those, this is a battery I had for storage charged. It shows you the total, the difference and the single cells. It goes up to six cells where the connector is only four cell connector. Yeah. And by pressing the preset button, you can, uh, let's say, 3.5 volts and long press it. And now we have the LiPo alarm set to 3.5 volts per cell. You have 12 volt and 5 volt outputs, a lot of them. You get different cables. You get the, the ones with the broad, broad connector that are quite common. But you also get the thinner, thinner ones, which are used, for example, on the quantum receivers. So the USB output is a good idea as well, if you use a smartphone or something like that on your ground station setup. And also for a smartphone or a tablet, you get this clamp holding thingy here in front. It cannot hold an iPad Air. I mean, it can hold it, but not clamp it in about one or two centimeters too small. I'd say some seven, seven inch or eight inch uh, tablets will work. If you want to use your phone, you get smaller clamps for the upper section. So um, ground station with tablet, I can think of immersion RC tools, uh, streaming the, the telemetry data and you can visualize them. What else do we see down here? Uh, we have two video in, our SSI in, and they are prepared to be used with the quantum receivers, of course. They come with the fitting cables. Those are quite short cables and I mean you can solder really short cables to have it uh, even nicer. This way it's a bit messy but it's okay. Uh, you have a video cable and an RSSI cable going to the quantum receiver and you have the 12 volt power cable coming from the back here. So in my scenario I have two receivers fed with 12 volt and one 12 volt plug to the monitor up. Receiver side, it is fitted with this plastic holder to just slide in the little quantum receivers which are actually quite good and of course it makes sense to use different antennas. What I not so much like about their standard design is uh, having the receivers down on, this, on, the, on the side of the ground station. The antenna doesn't get 360 degree of freedom, at least 
this would be important for the SPV. For the patch antenna, it's not so important. What's really important for ground station, of course, is a video out. You have a chinch style RCA connector, um, and you have three of them. You can plug in your, let's say, the monitor. You could have another DVR, and you can have goggles, or you have two set of goggles for passenger flying. So, three video out is really luxury, and it's nice. Yeah, that's about it. So it's it's nothing it's nothing magic. It's just a plastic box which can hold the battery. It has voltage regulators. It has a circuitry for RSSI decision, so it will convert two of the quantum receivers here to a diversity system at a quite nice price, I'd say. So you have the flexibility to either use the little quantum receiver on your goggles in a single mode, or you have two of them here installed on the ground station, which is nice, which is a nice uh, flexibility. You have the LiPo checker, which is nice, so you get an audible alert as soon as the battery is, is dead. But yeah, with a 5000 mAh4 cell, you will go quite long. Um, it has an active fan because of the voltage regulators, and it's uh, if you take a look at the picture of the voltage regulator inside, it's really a massive, massive capacitors. Um, can tell you too much about the details of the electronics inside, but they look well made for my eye. Okay, so on the back, you have the power on switch, where you power on the whole ground station. You immediately hear the active fan, but it's not too loud. We see that our quantum receivers are turned on. Yeah, and that's a bit of the downside of, of this uh, modular diversity system. You have to set the correct frequency on each of the receivers separate. I mean, you can use the auto scan feature, but for me it doesn't work 100%. So yeah, that's a bit of an inconvenience, but it's okay. This is the field world monitor. I already talked about it. I didn't do a full review on it yet. Um, it's a super bright 1000 candela uh, 7 inch, I think 7 inch monitor, which would also have a diversity system built in. That's why it has two antenna connectors on top. And it also has a DVR built in. So it's it's a luxury option for this ground station. Uh, you can use uh, a single, uh, normal, uh, normal display as well. On Just top. turn on my testing ground station here. So we now get an image. As for the range and the diversity functionality, I will test this uh, in a receiver test later. What it doesn't do is beeping if it changes between the two diversity systems. Um, but what's nice is on the single receivers you see the RSSI value and I see that the SPV here has 81% and the patch has 98. Okay, um, yeah, and of course for the mounting you have a tripod screw on the bottom of the plastic box. Attach this tripod adapter here. I mean, I still think about more uses of this of this tablet holder here, and it could be, for example, used to hold your goggles. Okay, it is a bit of an unstable mount, maybe, and I think if you use them on a permanent installation, you're you're better off if you glue them in with a double-sided tape or something like that, so they don't wobble. The box itself feels robust. Yeah, and it's nice that you have no cables hanging down. Um, maybe one downside of the battery being up here in the box is that you have a higher point of weight, a higher center of gravity, so to say. So if you're flying in really windy conditions, it's 
normally a good idea to have the battery on, on one of the legs so the weight is, is distributed lower. What are my thoughts about this thing? I mean it's a bit bulkier than what I normally prefer to use. I really liked the idea of this ultra compact diversity receiver here of the FR632 because it's really small and you can just place it on, an, on a tripod and have about the same connectors like here. You have this, this Sinner 12 volt plug. With this scenario you would just have a longer cable and the battery down on the leg of the of the tripod and also the video cable coming out here to your goggles and that's it. And this is of course much more backpack friendly. So the ground station um, most certainly appeals to guys that use the FPV equipment out of the trunk. So you drive to your flying field and install your tripod with a nice ground station. Uh, I think this is the way you want to go. If you more the backpack FPV, uh, you would want such a smaller device. Of course you have more possibilities and more options here. And it's like a, a public terminal also. If you have friends on the field, you can plug in two or maybe even three, three uh, displaying devices and, and share the experiences, which is really nice. Yeah, so let's see how this works in the upcoming season. Yeah, it could of course as well be the base for an even more impressive setup with the antenna tracker. So you have a really huge base on top where you can mount your antenna tracker and then have the ultimate solution. Uh, yeah, one thing not to forget to unplug the battery. Okay, so thanks for watching. Bye.